Whether you initiate a purchasing cycle with a purchase request or purchase order, SageX3 has standard workflows available to control the routing for each document type. The standard workflows are designed to work out of the box, but they can also be customized to cater to your business rules. Let me show you how. In this example, user John Doe creates a new purchase request in SageX3. This purchase request contains two detailed lines. The first line is for the purchase of 10 units of three chain wheels. And on the second line, within the same purchase request, John Doe requests 100 kilogram of explosives. As soon as John Doe creates this request, SageX3 will automatically create workflow emails that we have customized so that the workflow routing is based on the stock grouping within each detail line. Note that in this case, the request has an ID number ending in 22. Here is an example of the email the approver will receive. In this case, notice that we receive two email notifications from the system. The first email relates to request number 22, line 1. This is for the purchase of 10 units of three chain wheels. The second email relates to the request number 22, line 2 and is for the purchase of 100 kilogram of explosives. You can see information such as the vendor proposed by the requester and the order information. There is also a link within the body of the email that takes you directly to the request within SageX3 to approve or reject the document. Of note, the email message is highly customizable. Now let's suppose the approver would like to see additional information on the purchase of 100 kg of explosives. When she clicks on the link, Sage automatically brings her to the login screen. Once logged in, she is brought directly to the specific detail line she was looking for and provides additional information on the purchase request. Based on this information, Jane can click on the actions icon here in the upper right corner to either reject or accept the request. In this case, let's go ahead and click on the accept button. We see a note at the top of the screen that indicates that the request has been updated. If we now go back to John Doe's screen, look at the purchase request number 22 and scroll over to the right on the detail grid, we see a column entitled Sign. This indicates whether the detail line has been signed off on or not. In this case, since Jane approved the second line item, we have the status of completely under the sign column for that detail line. Whether the approver approves or rejects the document, the decision and attendant notes are captured by Sage and form part of the audit trail for the document. Would you like additional help setting up your purchase order requisitions? Contact us or reach out directly to me, Jack Chan. We're driven to help you succeed. <laughs>